Michael Jackson's passing was one of the most shocking deaths in history. Not long ago, two new documentaries about the singer were released, one titled Killing Michael Jackson and the other called Michael Jackson Chase the Truth, made by someone who said they had close connections to the king of pop. What kind of twisted details do both productions include? Your boy Marky Mark here and stay with me to find out about how Michael Jackson's death has become even bigger conspiracy theory. It's been 10 years since Michael Jackson passed away, but for millions of fans, the grief still continues. The gossip doesn't stop and of course, more than one person continues to make money at the expense of the tragic life that this legendary singer lived. Even though the events concerning his death passed a decade ago, it's as if the world will never be tired of speculating about Michael. New facts surrounding his death keep appearing and it seems that this is the legacy of idols that people can't stop talking about them even when they're dead. And in this case, of the new docu-series that reviews all the details that surrounded the confusing last moments of the star. What is known from the beginning is that he died following an overdose of medication administered by his cardiologist, Conrad Murray. Murray was sentenced to prison for four years for reckless manslaughter. But what remained a great mystery was the truth about the state of Michael's body when leaving this world. The series reveals that forensics covered up shocking truth about Michael's body. Stephen Schaefer, professor of anesthesiology at Stanford University, said Murray supplied Michael with enough medication to take down a rhinoceros. He also said that he applied the substance in the form of a serum so that it could not be detected. All this suspicious stuff comes from someone who should take care of the life of Michael Jackson? But wait, this is isn't all. Detective Smith revealed that when he showed up in the room where Michael's body was laying, the employees were covering the windows and forced him out. They immediately closed the door and there was no access to the room until five hours later. What were they trying to hide and who is behind this tragedy? What caught Detective Smith's attention during the few minutes he was in the room is that Michael was completely bald, barely had a few hairs on the sides of his head and was full of scars. Was Michael's hair a wig then? Apparently Michael Jackson had suffered a serious accident while recording a commercial for a drink in which he burned all of his hair off causing second degree burns on his scalp and his face. Okay. That's enough of the terrible details. It is also rumored that Michael Jackson's ex-wife, Lisa Marie Presley, is writing a book in which she will reveal the truth about their two-year marriage. So if this turned out to be true, new facts about the singer will continue to appear and poor Michael won't even be able to defend himself against anything. What is the other documentary Chase the Truth about? It came out to contradict the very strong accusations of Wade Robson and James Safechuck that became popular thanks to Leaving Neverland, another documentary that tells stories of alleged victims in the face of serious accusations that still tarnish Michael Jackson's memory regarding his relationship with children. In the new documentary Michael Jackson Chase the Truth, there are several interviews with the biographer Michael Smallcomb, Michael's bodyguard Matt Fittis, and the actor Mark Lester. And speaking of Mike Smallcomb, a few months ago on his Twitter, he shared a fragment of a radio program, The Morning Culture, in which he talked about the detail that would clear up at least one of the accusations that weigh in on the singer. The biographer said that one of the alleged victims, James Safechuck, couldn't have met Michael Jackson in 1992 because the train station in Neverland was built in 1994. So now the question is, what is the truth? And Matt Fittis, who was one of the Michael Jackson's most faithful bodyguards, was also very upset with the documentary Leaving Neverland. He even invited the alleged victims, Robson and Safechuck, through their social media to meet and talk on live television in the UK. Michael's former bodyguard is also trying to prevent the documentary from winning an Emmy Award and he says the nomination is absolute madness. All these conspiracy theories are crazy. Will we ever find out what really happened to Michael Jackson? Do you think any of these documentaries are telling the truth? Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with Curious Sips. Until next time.